first open up the figure you want to digitize in paint and draw lines. It may, helps you have the most accurate locations. You need to have four locations on the map originally for you to be able to um, geo-reference it. So let's go here. So I would open it in paint and you can see it's a very low res image, but I literally would just drag lines. It's really just so you can have four accurate points to geo-reference the image. Now you have to be sure to save as and change the file type to BMP or else you won't be able to import it. And you can rename the file to something useful that you'll remember and can find it. If you open up Digi, so you go to it and then you double click on the application button, it's this little bug. Anyway. Now I'll click on new and raster digitizing and then you can click on the image we've just created. And so literally, you don't change anything, I just click OK, and so it loads it in here. First step is this one here, it goes Calibrate Image, so you click on it. I never change anything here either, I leave it as Cartesian coordinates, because most of the time your figures from papers are in that long. I click Next, and so here I'm going to select four points to georeference. So I'm going to click on this point here, and so it's, it's given the source X and Y, so just the, the random values from here and I have to put in the world coordinates so I don't know if it's gonna let me scroll up or down okay there we are so we're in that dot there so it should be 25.9 and then the Y don't forget to put negative 32.6 you go add point to do the next one so literally click 25.9 and minus 32.8 Add, sorry, and this is 25.7, 25.7 and minus 32.8. Pretty similar if you've ever done it in Geosoft, it's a similar process. And so then this is the last one of 25.7 and minus 32.6. And you click next. And then those are the points there that you're using. You click Next, Finish, and now it's, you can see that the coordinates have changed in the bottom. There's actually X and Y reflect your values. Very often you might in an image have a fault. I did it a lot for faults, but let's for this one just do, I want to digitize the seismic line. So this is a Karoo seismic line. The pinks are dolerites, the yellows are quaternary rocks, and the greens are Beaufort rocks. So literally now what I'll do is I'll go to the, the left hand side here, click on Digitize Polygon. You give it a name, so seismic line. Um, when you export in the end, it exports everything to the same DAT file. So just label these in a way you can figure out later what is what. So for now I'm just digitizing one thing, so it doesn't need to be too fancy. So I click on OK, and then it's your choice how much effort you want to put in. I could go super precise, but I'm, for now I'm just going to click very roughly what the size of the line is. It's quite nice, it moves for you. And double click to close. And then you can do the same with points. This one over here says digitize points. And so now I'll go file, export, I'll save it to here. I'm going to save it as a shape file. So last week we were using shape files, so it makes it a lot easier. And I'll just call it seismic line. Save. And I'm not really sure what you have to click on here. Last time I just clicked on assume areas as line. And so now what we would do is go back to QGIS. Okay, so in QGIS, we have our outline of South Africa loaded. I'm now going to load in some geology files. So I'm going to go to Add Vector, Browse, and then I've got Pole Beaufort, so this is the Beaufort formation of the Karoo, and I click Open, and you can see it loads this purple shape file. Plus Browse, I'm also going to load the Quaternary Rocks as a shape file. And I'm also going to load the Lin is a linear dolerite dikes also as a shape file. 
see they cover a large part of South Africa. There is a problem with this file. You can see it's cut off at weird angles in some places. So I think there was a problem digitizing. Some of it seems to be missing. And then I'm going to also go down to Pole, so Polynomial, and Carew Dollarites. These are the Dollarite Sills. And click Open. And you can see it loads it as quite similar colors. So I'm just going to, I'm leaving the both as this. Quaternary, I'm going to double click on. And I want to just change the color to something more creamy. Okay. And I want to change the Karoo Dollarite. It's usually shown as pink in a lot of the maps. Okay. And because of that pink, I'm actually going to change this both to green. So it's a bit easier to recognize. Okay. And then this, the Karoo. Peru dollarite dikes and then change to black. Okay, and so now onto here I want to load this seismic line that we've digitized. So the first thing to do is to just look at your project in this bottom right hand corner here. It shows you what coordinate system you're dealing with. So it says current CRS World Geodetic System 1984. So we're in lat long WGS 84. And we just need to make sure that what we import is the same. So I'm going to import the shape file. I'm going to go browse. And I saved it here. Size of line shape. Click open. And that's asking me the coordinate system of this line that I want to use. And I must make sure that it's the same as what's in my project to the bottom right. And I click OK. And it's hard to see, but it has loaded it in down here. Um, the easiest thing to do is right-click on it and go Zoom to Layer. And you can see it's zoomed in. The problem is it's very light, so I'm going to double-click on it. And make it black. You can see I, I use a different method each time for the colors. And I'm going to make it thicker. Okay, so it's a bit easier to see. And so this is actually what I want to create the map of. So you can see the green is the Beaufort formation. This yellow is quaternary. These pinks are the dolerite sills and sheets coming through. And then these linear features are the dolerite ducts. And so you can um, just use this plus button and zoom in accordingly. And now we're going to do what we did last time. Project, new project. I'm going to say Karoo. Seismic, and here I'm going to go Layout, Add Map, I'm going to drag, let's see what it looks like, okay, and so it's our map has, our line is a bit off, so you can, I'm sure there's other ways of doing it, but I'm just going to extend it a bit to the south. And so nice features you can also add is to go um, Layout, Add Image, and click down here. You do this to add your a north arrow, and then you click Image Property, scroll down to Search Directory, and click here. And you see it's busy loading. Once it has loaded, you can choose an arrow, your choice, which one you like. Okay, something else you can do is go Layout. Add scale bar. You can do it in the bottom here. You can change your features of it here. You can go layout and add legend. And it actually adds a legend of everything on here. And um, you're obviously going to have to play around with the order if you want it to um, be changed. And also the names, let's see, you can rename things here. So quaternary. Okay, and if we now go back here, 
and let's just delete it. There might be a better way of updating it. And add legend. Okay, and so it's giving a legend for your image. And so you can play around with things, shift them so that it's in a neater position. And remember here you can actually play around with the, uh, the grid. Here, one, one, oh, it's too small. Okay, and like we did last time, you can change your frame and you can draw your coordinates and change the size and change the decimal degree. I'd say you want a bigger font. Um, and there you're on your way to creating a good map for your area and then to export it you go composer and then export as jpeg i mean as pdf or as image